Um, if Africa Rising was an animal, I would say it was a chameleon. As a chameleon changes its color depending on the environment, so we have changed uh, oh, in the course of the project implementation the, the focus, the composition of the scientists, the, the locations, and, and also our approaches. Like a cow? The main reason is that the cow integrates uh, most parts of agriculture. Um, it feeds on crops, it produces manure to fertilize crops, it produces milk and meat for nutrition, so it is it's encompassing. That's why I would say a cow is a better representative of Africa right now. To me, I read to be looking like an elephant. The way it operates, remember, we are dealing with what we call sustainable intensification, and it embedded many, many parameters in it, just to mention. These are all, all fall under five sustainable intensification domains, ranging from productivity, environment, economic, uh, human condition, as well as uh, nutrition. Food. The fun part is when you start doing science with, with, with farmers, who really are looking for the solutions to their life. Meanwhile, you are looking for knowledge, they're actually looking for solutions. It's not a very good mix. So you initially start with quarrels, but at the end of the day, the scientists are seen as solution providers. In the Africa Rising setup, the teams, within the teams and the, uh, across the teams, you know, you work, you know, one, you know, at friendly note, you know, as you know, equals. So you know, you there wasn't a kind of feeling like, okay, this is a, a manager, but we are all working as equals, as friends, as colleagues. So it was really, you know, an environment that was more interesting and fun. It had a great fun fact, the, the, the program, because there were so many different characters in, in the program and some are really uh, unique. And uh, the, the many meetings that we had over the courses and field visits and get togethers, I mean, they, they gave so much opportunity for, for, for fun. So despite the, the serious work and sometimes frustrations, there was a, was, was a lot of fun. actively listening and identifying capacity issues that you need to address from the different partners because we have different capacities so listening but also actively identifying um, the different capacity gaps and then addressing them where possible working with different people to find solutions to a common problem i had to work with foresters agroforestry, I had to work with livestock, had to work with businessmen who only see profit. And so when you think about all of that, it tells you how development is complex. Change doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes we, we think we know what the farmers want. And when you start talking to them, you realize you don't know everything. So you reach there, you tell them what is happening, and then you realize that they have some more information that you are not aware of. And then they start teaching you. So it's, it's a good process to, to learn from, from each other, both the researchers and the farmers we are trying to work with. <coughs> One, uh, the partnerships uh, were really solid. Participants with different skills, uh, um, researchers with different skills uh, came together and discussed the approaches and working in multidisciplinary teams has been quite enriching. So I really like the multidisciplinary approach. The involvement of the government, actors at different levels, from the village to the district up to the higher levels, so that when the project comes to an end, 
this uh, government together with community extension agents, they will take over facilitating scaling out of the technology, which is really going very fast. The Africa Rising project was somehow unique in its way because it brought uh, researchers from different um, international research centers together working on common problems. Um, before, we were all basically doing our own thing. Uh, and here, we had a forum where, where these researchers could come together, discuss things, um, define new ways of research, um, and also benefit from each other's expertise. I'm a cropping systems agronomist, but here I worked with uh, so many other disciplines, economists, social, social scientists, uh, but also nutritional scientists and, and other people. And all of that interaction, this interdisciplinary work, helped me also to have a different view on the research that I'm doing. One word for sure is, is long duration, uh, because I think it's, it was a unique, uh, it's a unique case that the program runs for, for, for so, so long. And, and therefore my gratitude to, to the donor on behalf of the whole uh, program. Another one, hard work. I mean, that uh, for me as the pro program manager, was uh, there was no nine to five day of Monday to Friday day. It was very intensive work, but very rewarding. Innovation, secondly about scaling, and lastly, conception. Why innovation? We had phases in implementing the Africa Rising. There was validation, generating and validating the technologies. Why scaling? It is a stage where now we we had to roll out these best bet technologies to our farming communities. And why consumption? It is a situation where our end use of a technology, stakeholders, actors, whoever use, whether it's extension, whether it's a research national level, whoever, whether it's a scale, but whatever, they are able to use the product coming from the Africa Rising. And to me, that's the way I can see Africa Rising in three words. It's challenging. At the beginning, to come to a, a common understanding of uh, what we want and what we can achieve, uh, achieve together. The second word I would like to use, um, sustainable, because we could maintain this project for a long time and we know that some of those technologies that we have proposed and that we have researched on will continue. And the last word that I will probably use is friendship, because we come here from from this place with strong uh, relations, strong French friendship with other people that we built over the, all the years. Dr. Patrick Yokod, uh, he seemed like to be knowing everything with him. I failed to know even his profession because whatever word, he used to know almost everything. And then another person is Dr. Matete. He's a leader, but also he has like what the sense of humor, whatever. So you find that you, you really like to work with him in general. There is something special that I learned from Professor Sixnet. Uh, the energy she had uh, during the 10 years, basically her energy uh, dissipated to other uh, researchers. It was spontaneous and uh, I, I think uh, it's, it's so important to have a scientific leadership that uh, provides energy to young people. It's Imgad Zeledon, the manager of Africa Rising program. And the reason is this is a person who will commend you where you are doing so well and who will give you feedback. Even if it's negative, it will not be too harsh on you. Just aim at you, you know, improving. We had a field where we planted uh, some uh, new varieties and then uh, the time we went to harvest. So we went there and then the, the man was not there. So the lady uh, authorized us to start harvesting. And the man had the impression that he, after we harvest, we were taking the, the produce. So he came running with the with a machete 
And when he came, really, it was like he, he wanted really to, to, to cut us. <laughs> yeah, so until, you know, we calmed him down and we explained to say, no, 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 we just want to measure the use and, you know, uh, get the information, the data, the, all the harvest will be yours. Yeah, so that was the, really the most funny part to say people can react like that. Yeah. <laughs> Farmers are smart people. You, you go to them, you talk to them, they listen, and you, you feel like they don't know and you are new to what you are talking about. Then all of a sudden, the farmer tells you, oh, we have done this thing that has failed. So the fact that you get these farmers, they pretend they are, they are ignorant about the subject, but later you realize if you probably knew, you would have saved more time and addressed the problem which is... Um... Our chief scientist, who is also the chief whip, announced well in advance, he was teased during the meeting. So he promised people a Ugandan something. And yes, there was a lot of bananas. People enjoyed themselves up to late and the next day we were to depart for our different residences. By morning, no one was willing to leave because their GPS had changed. <laughs> the GPS was closer to the bathroom. People were having running stomachs and all kind throwing up back and forth. One already through our engagement in Africa Rising, we have a publication and that publications and the book has a lot of interesting area which addresses from a challenge that can be used even after the project termination. So I think maybe uh, those people like the extension officers, I think they should now take lead even after the project have ended, maybe they could take lead to make sure that there's that continuity or the work which actually has been done by the Africa Rising. To hand over, you know, in a slow but sure way to key actors. For instance, if it is research products, we make sure that the tari and even other private actor, private sector actors, if they are there, we hand over to them.